and a half, seven years out, it still works, and they're still so that batch graduated. The machines go back to the next group. Okay, so yeah. they, they once they graduate, they yes. return the machine into in the yes. cycle. So the idea is that once you hit about the age of twelve to fourteen, this is no longer that useful to you. Uh, you would sort of move on to. What kind of things are they seeing in the students after they graduate? How how does it? What kind of um, uh, what kind of outcome do you have uh, uh, in uh, graduate? So we've seen all kinds of studies. Some studies have gone in and said, you know, in a, in a three, three to six month period, there was no significant difference in uh, language learning or arts or math. Uh, but there was maybe some movement in cognitive, you know, um, grasping and so on. But then if you look at the longer term projects, three, five, seven years, there we definitely see uh, a better grasp of math, science, uh, working with physical objects, robotics, uh, and then just sort of this understanding that you can create new things to solve your existing local problems, as in, let me create an application that does Are there things. social consequences, would you say? Uh, oh, there are definitely social consequences. For example? Uh, so, for instance, in some of the schools, uh, they wanted to solve something locally because they wanted to display a particular, you know, way of... I'm talking about process. adults now, after the adults have... Oh, you mean in the families? So... I mean, I mean, I mean, kids, after they graduate, what happens to them? It you know, so we've seen some of them who have just started getting into other programs like Google Summer of Code and some of the other ones, but I don't think we've gotten that far yet, because, you know, we're talking about, what, five to seven years at the most. So they're right at that point where they've yeah, finished high school, but the not quite gotten into that space where we can see what happens if, if they get a job. Right. Okay. So my guess would be another reason. Do you have any children that are going to work on the OEC project? Thank you. Do I have? Yeah. Do you, do you oh. think any of the children from these programs will turn around and contribute? There point? are two or three who are very promising. Uh, there's one who actually helped me uh, configure this thing. I mean, he doesn't know anything about Python or Bash, but I told him what I was doing, and he asked me why I was doing what, and then he sat down and he helped me configure this, and then he went to every laptop and ran the, the, the shell script to, to push the backups there. So there's some who are very interested in knowing more than just what they see on the screen. Yeah. So what the mesh networking? Is that, is that out of the picture now? So mesh happened with XO1 based on a draft version of 802.11s. And they found that outside of small groups, it actually doesn't work very well because it, the multicast DNS essentially drowns everything. So the, the traffic sort of kills the network before you can do anything useful on it. Now, the two things. One is the 802.11s has moved on, and what we have now is much, much better, but nobody went back to implement it. The second is they figured out that for what they wanted to do in small groups of three to five kids, you could just do ad hoc and that seems to sort of work okay. So they figured that was an easier thing to do, so they switched to ad hoc. X01 will do both 11S and ad hoc, but 151 works, they don't do 11S. They do only ad hoc. What if you like, use like a router, like I say, like the Linksys, and you know, now they're having these mesh parties and stuff like that? You could do some of it, and I'm not, I'm not saying it won't happen, but yeah. what comes from the company, So we um, often go to get snacks uh, after.